Hey everyone, welcome to Off Grid 48. I thought I'd put together this little video on our uh, upgrade to our battery bank system. So I want to kind of walk through that with you. So I don't know if you've looked at some of my earlier videos, you see that I've had my off grid battery uh, system in place now for probably 13 years, going on 13 years. My primary battery system has been a forklift battery and it's about 1600 amps. I bought it new um, and I've been running that as my primary uh, battery bank. Uh, it's a 48 volt system, it's a single battery, it's a humongous battery, it weighs about 4,000 pounds. Um, and then a few years ago, I decided uh, when I had to have that battery serviced, I had one of my cells that had to have service, so I had to pull it out and get it serviced. I added a backup bat uh, battery bank and then I used uh, uh, 200 amp AGM batteries. So these AGM batteries is what I used as a bat uh, temporary. So when I pulled that main battery out to have it serviced, I switched over, put in a transfer switch, uh, switched over to my uh, backup battery bank. And these last, they've worked out reasonably well. But what I've noticed over the years, now I'm going on about 13 years on this main uh, uh, lead acid forklift battery, and I'm noticing that it's probably getting close to need some service again. Uh, it doesn't hold the charge like it should. I'm not getting the amps out of it that I need. So I've been using the uh, backup battery bank more and more. And then I had one of these, these uh, backup battery banks, or 200 amp AGM batteries, and I put in uh, eight of these uh, to get a total of 400 amps. Um, but I've had one of these uh, fail. And if you know with your battery bank, your battery bank's only as good as your weakest battery. So I've had issues. So rather than put in a new battery and have to deal with mixing new and old batteries and going through all that, I decided it's probably a pretty good, I, pretty good time to go ahead and upgrade that uh, backup battery bank. So I did a bunch of research and uh, what I kind of came up with is this lithium, they call uh, LifePo4 batteries. They're actually lithium iron phosphate batteries as opposed to the traditional lithium ion. Um, and I've, I've read a lot of good things about these batteries. There's a lot of advantages of these batteries over the lithium iron, uh, lithium ion batteries. They're much safer. Uh, they won't uh, catch fire. They won't explode like uh, the uh, lithium ion batteries can. Um, they're uh, work got a much wider temperature range. I can go down to maybe 10 below zero up to 150 degrees versus just down to freezing uh, with the lithium ion batteries. Um, the weight is, is probably less than half of the weight of a lead acid battery. Uh, the costs have come way down. Uh, one of these batteries, this is a 200 amp uh, LiPo 4 battery, uh, costs me off of Amazon about $570. So with four of them, I'm under $2,500. Uh, so that's a pretty good deal. So I put in four of these uh, at the cabin. I've been running it uh, now for about a month to kind of test it out. And it's done exceptionally well. I mean, everything at the cabin, you can run the furnace overnight. We can run the microwave, the coffee pot, the water pumps, uh, the Tuvala uh, uh, stove. It's been running everything just fine. Um, it's never gotten it's never gotten depleted that and even though it's only down to 200 amps uh, during the daylight I've got my solar system there during the day uh, the solar brings it back up to 100 percent so in the two months time I haven't had to run the generator at all it's been running pretty good on its own that complemented with the solar has been uh, keeping it keeping it up so I'm thinking that what I'm probably going to do is I'll probably add another four of these uh, to the backup battery bank to give me a total of 400 amps and then maybe depending on how everything goes I might put another for it to get a total of 600. Now the nice thing about the lithium batteries versus a lead acid battery is you know with a lead acid battery you've got to monitor the voltage and you can really only discharge them down to about 50 percent. You can discharge it more but typically about 50 percent is all of what you're going to want to do. So whatever the amperage is in your battery, you've only got about a usable, uh, you know, 50%. So my uh, 1600 amp uh, uh, battery really is only useful at about 800 amps or less, right? So uh, the nice thing about the lithium is you've got 100% of that usage. If I've got a 100 amp battery, I can use 100% of that. These are 200 amps, I can use all 200 of that. Now the big difference with the lithium though, 
which is going to take me a little while to get used to, is I'm, I've been doing this at, at, at our off-grid cabin, monitoring the voltage uh, for time, so I can monitor the voltage, and as the voltage declines, I've got a low battery cutout, so, you know, the 50, uh, 54 volts is, is maximum, and then I put a low battery cutout of about 40 volts, uh, so as the battery voltage drops, once it gets down to that level, it cuts the power to, to help the, from damaging the battery. Now, in using that, what I'll find is, you know, if I turn on the microwave or coffee pot or water pump or whatever, you know, whatever my current voltage in my battery, it'll drop down. It could drop down by as much as 5 volts, depending on how many amps are being pulled. And depending on where the uh, a, a state of charge is on the battery, um, that could pull the battery down to that low battery cutoff, which will cut off the battery uh, in the middle of usage. So um, I've done that a few times. It's a little frustrating, but you know, once you're done, say with the microwave or the water pump or whatever, uh, it comes back up, the power comes back on. So I've learned, learned to deal with that. The lithium, you know, the biggest difference there is the lithium has the same voltage pretty well all the way through until it's done, and then, it, then it's empty. So you can't monitor just voltage, you know, so uh, because it'll show you to the very end, it'll show you 52 volts, 54 volts, whatever the full charge is on it, um, and then it's empty, and then it's got zero. And when it's zero, it's, a, it's not like low battery and it's got some reserve power. It is totally empty. And what I know, I ran through some tests at the cabin with that. I wanted to see what happened when the lithium went all the way to the end and ran out. And what happens is basically the complete inverter charger shuts down. Um, even my remote monitor uh, lost all of its settings. It lost the clock settings. It lost all my settings because there was no no power left in the battery. So basically what I've learned is that with the lithium batteries, what I'm going to have to do is I can't monitor the voltage anymore. i got to monitor my amperage usage, and then i got to monitor the state of charge. So I can, with my, luckily, my remote, I've got a Magnum Energy uh, remote. I can switch the display to monitor the state of charge. So now, as I'm using the amps out of the lithium batteries, I can see my state of charge get down. And once it gets down to a certain point, I can make a decision to go ahead and run the generator or, or, uh, uh, or whatever. So that's going to be a little, take me a little getting used to. But I want to make sure that my usage doesn't exceed that because I don't want to ever get to the point with the lithium battery where I reach that end and it just completely cuts off. Uh, luckily, they charge pretty quick uh, when the, these 200 amp batteries are completely done. I can run my uh, run my generator for three four hours, bulk charge. It jumps through the three stages: bulk charge, absorb, and float, and it brings it back up to 100 percent. So they charge up pretty quickly. So I'm very pleased with this battery. It's 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 very lightweight. Uh, the prices have come down uh, from what the lead acid batteries were, and uh, I think it's going to be a good it's going to be a good solution for the cabin. And I'm seeing that uh, these LifePo4, also called LFP batteries are used more and more in off-grid applications. Um, it's just a really good it's just a really good system. So I just wanted to kind of give you an update there. I'll show you a little bit of I had to, in the process of here my remote control uh, for my Magnum uh, energy inverter charger was probably a good 14 years old. I had to upgrade that because uh, uh, it didn't have my battery type of the uh, LFP battery. So I had to upgrade that. So I have my battery type in there as LFP, uh, so it knows how to handle. This battery also has a built-in uh, battery management system too, so that's a good thing. But uh, you need to be able to monitor the state of charge and whatever your inverter charger is, because you can't just monitor the voltage. Uh, otherwise, you're going to just use it, and then it's just going to cut off, and it's going to be completely dead. Um, so I wanted to go through and upgrade and show you that. But these are the these are the AGM batteries. I bought these guys used. I've had them up there now for. Uh, three, four years, and they've worked okay, except, like I said, one went bad, and, uh, you know, when one goes bad, basically your whole battery bank is going to go down. So I needed to do some upgrade, either at, replace these, but rather than mix and match old and new batteries, I decided just to replace them, and let's try to go with the lithium. I've been a little wary up to now to go with the lithium batteries, because I've been hearing all the bad things about lithium batteries, mainly the lithium-ion uh, batteries, but the LifePo 4 batteries uh, they they're, they're so much better. Also, uh, the, the, I said the temperature range, um, the number of times they can charge. 
uh, they hold you know thousands and thousands of times uh, uh, charge. So it's going to be a much better investment. And I think if I ultimately end up with about 600 amps off of these, uh, that's going to be equivalent to basically 1,200 amps on my lead acid battery. And that will cost me about what that battery is. I paid about uh, six, seven thousand dollars for that um, forklift battery 12 years ago. And so if I bring this all the way up to 600 amps, I'll end up spending about 7,500 bucks. So I'll spend about the same amount of money and I'll have a lot more amperage usage. The batteries are much easier to maintain. I don't, I, and I don't have to put it in a, a, a ventilated area. I don't have to run a fan in the battery room. Uh, I can put these in an enclosed area. Um, so no maintenance on them at all. I don't have to do any water, any maintenance on them at all. So I think these are going to be much better battery for the cabin, and I'm seeing more and more people are using these in off-grid applications. So, um, so go ahead, take a look at that. If you're looking at your battery bank or looking at deciding, I've always shied away from lithium batteries because of the costs and the danger to lithium batteries. Uh, but check out these LifePo 4 batteries, and I think you'll be surprised. You'll be, they're much safer, cost-effective, and uh, they'll, do your, they'll do you a good job. All righty, thanks, guys. Okay, hey everyone. Okay, so I'm doing a, an upgrade to my battery system. So I had is my primary battery bank. I had this forklift battery. <clears throat> it's about 48 volts, about 1500 amps. I've had this in place as my main battery bank for probably the last 12, 13 years. It's done a reasonably good job. I had one bad cell that had to be serviced over that time. Uh, but now it's starting to, I know that it's, uh, it's not holding a charge as well as it should, so I don't have nearly the, uh, the amount of amps that I should for that size battery. Uh, so it's a lead acid battery, and it's done reasonably well. It's been my primary, as I said. Uh, three or four years ago, I added a backup battery bank here, and I uh, used these uh, AGM batteries, these uh, 200 amp batteries. Uh, I bought them used. And uh, I had eight of them, different brands, and so for a total of 400 amps. So I've been switching back and forth depending on you know what the situation is with the battery. Uh, I decided to re to replace the AGM batteries with some lithium. I want to give lithium a try. So these are 200 amp uh, lithium uh, LiPo 4 batteries. Uh, so here you can see here I've got four in place. So I've got 200 amps. And I've been running that the last couple weeks, and it's done a really good job. Um, I basically haven't had to run the generator at all, and I've been uh, running the furnace and the fridge and the coffee pots and the microwaves and everything like that. That combined with the solar input, uh, it's been keeping pretty well. Um, but I do see that when I'm up here on a weekend using everything, I'll pretty well go through that, and I'll have to, uh, at the end, uh, if, if the weather's not good, I'll have to run the generator to bring it back up. But, for the most part, these have done very well. I think what I'll end up doing is adding another four, so I've got a total of uh, 400 amps on the on the lithium. The nice thing about the lithium is that you know the the voltage. Basically, you've got 100% of that usable. If I've got a 200 amp battery, I can use all 200 amps of that, um, and then uh, charge it at the end. Um, the issue here in the off grid uh, inverter is. Um, I better keep close track of my usage because when I get to that end, I just boom, power's out, everything's out, um, and there's there's basically no warning versus the, the lead acid battery. I can monitor the voltage and I can see the voltage dropping and I'll have a low battery cut out and I'll have a pretty good indication if the batteries need charged or if it's going to cut out. So it's going to take a little while to get used to the using the lithium, but I like them because basically this, this 200 amp battery is equivalent to... 400 amps that I had with the AGM batteries because I could only really discharge the uh, the AGM or the lead acid down to about 50%. So when I add the next four and get actually 400, I'll have 400 usable amps, and that's going to be the equivalent of having 800 amps on my lead acid and my uh, uh, on my AGM batteries. So uh, Basically, it's been working out pretty well. It's got to learn to uh, tie everything into the and monitor the state of charge as opposed to the battery voltage. But other than that, I think the lithium batteries are going to be a good upgrade. 
also for this battery upgrade, since I'm upgrading to lithium batteries, I also had to upgrade my Magnum Energy uh, remote control. So this is what I upgraded to. It supports lithium batteries. So basically what I had to do, we upgraded this guy. See it's inverting if I change my battery type to LFP for lithium and then normally when I'm monitoring this I monitor the voltage and the amps usage but with lithium you really can't monitor the voltage because the voltage is going to stay high all the way till the end so what you really need to monitor is the state of charge so here I need to monitor this, the battery state of charge, and when I put up my automatic generator start, I'm going to configure it to monitor the state of charge and not the voltage, because with lithium, the voltage stays high until the very end when it's out. Okay, so these are the AGM batteries that I've had in place for the last couple years. These are 200 amp AGM batteries, and I had eight of them, so I had a total of 400 amps. Uh, at 48 volt DC but you can only really discharge it down to 50 percent so really I only had about 200 usable amps so this was my backup battery bank and this is what I'm upgrading to the lithium so I've just removed the uh, AGM 200 amp batteries and I'm putting four 200 amp lithium uh, uh, LiPo 4 batteries and uh, uh, which is much better because you know with the lithium now I've got basically full usage of the full 200 amps uh, so that's the equivalent of eight of these batteries <laughs>